Hey guys and gals, welcome to Sweet Project Cars of Cool Trick and Affordable Ways for the Do-It-Yourselfer and Simple Ways. We are going to teach you some mechanical abilities today. This is a damaged trailer that Julio took to the cleaners for us and bent both jacks up badly. So we're going to go through the complete repair of this and see if we can make it better than it was before. Like the $6 million man. It's going to be bulletproof we're done, we're hoping. Now I got to give you the intro on this after the intro. Here's the scenario. It's going to take probably three videos to do this. You'll want to see all three. What we're planning on doing is adding two of these right here with the weld on bracket. And we opted to cut those right off. and that's where we're at these are the ones that were damaged that one is still usable we'll just have to do some grinding on it i don't think we cut through the case on it at all we went down and got some steel and i'll tell you all about that where to get cheap steel and we actually got some pieces here heavier duty larger so we're going to make it better if we're going to do this project we got some quarter inch flat stock and some 3 16 or closer to 10 gauge probably heavier than 10 gauge but that's going to beef this whole area up right here we got this flattened out pretty darn good we may put a plate over that uh, we may not we may just uh paint it up nice and make it look good but we got a lot of it out of there but I don't like the look of it that well but it's going to be three videos so just be prepared for that and just go get your favorite drink coffee whatever it may be sit back and watch enjoy and hopefully you learn about why you never throw anything away and always keep your pieces and parts laying around that you may use for fabricating because if you're working on cars you're going to fabricate so let's get busy and make it happen, Cap'n. First thing we've got to do is dismantle everything that could melt because as you can see, we've got to do some heat on this. So we'll start taking it apart here a little bit. This is the brake power here. We're going to try to whip through this. Now, I took a bunch of pictures of every angle so I know how to wire it back together there's a lot of wires in here anything that's not connected to this wire here will go back on the post but there looks like four wires or so And if this wasn't in the way here, I could just drop it out the bottom, but it's in the way. All right, that was a long-winded screw. Now we should be able to pull the box right out of there. Box is out, and... We are good to go. All right, so what we're going to do is we decided it's going to be easier just to cut these bolts right off because we can't get to this one down here. So All the tools will be in the show more of the video's description. Julio, Cesar Chavez, Rodriguez, Carlos, Jesus, whatever your name. He keeps adding names every week. That's crazy. Anyhow, Julio, tell everybody where all the tools are located. Thank you, Julio, Cesar Chavez, Rodriguez, Carlos, Jesus. See, we did it. Now I'm telling you, it buzzes the heads off those boots in two seconds. Well, maybe not in two seconds. There it is. A lot easier to do that than trying to sit there and battle with trying to get that last bolt out right there.
Now we can heat this bracket up here, this one right here, and bend that down. We'll put it in the vise and uh, warm it up and tap it down till we get it parallel to these sides here. And that's brand new, just so you know, that, that bulldog is brand spanking new, or it was. And then you want a BFH to beat that down. And if I remember right, that is threaded into this. Put a pair of the old VGs on them. Might not have to warm it up. Might be able to just clamp it on with the best VGs around. That's what we call them, vice grips. One thing with having a set of torches, the good ones, not a lot of things can beat you. You can get a lot done with them. Well, there it is. Well, half the battle is over now that we got this out. Getting this one out won't be such a big problem. We're going to try to cut it high up there. So, you know, cut it up high on the weld so we can get this off without damaging this bracket right there. See all the black smoke? Turn it up and it disappears. And turn on your oxygen. All right, well, we got it flatter than it was before. We can put a block under here and hold that while we bang on it to flatten this out here. All right, here's what we're going to do. We have a punch down here. We're going to lift it up with the floor jack. We're going to heat this area up right here, and we're going to lift the tongue up. All right, and for aesthetics and strength, we may just weld a plate right over that. 16 gauge plate would work, or just a quarter inch. Actually uh, coming up some. Can't get any closer this way, but we can warm it up and try the pry bar and see if we can get those edges up. That's pretty darn good right there. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we just got to work on that right there. We might as well keep doing it uh, due to the fact that we have it pretty hot. So we're going to use the four jack thing work good and then the pry bar work good too. Now if we do it right, we should be able to heat this up and tap on this and flatten that out a little bit. We'll try it. We have this bar here that we can possibly do this number with. We can keep it from rolling. Let's move the jack over to this area right here. Okay, now let's move it right to where it went. That's funny. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these welds off the best we can. The objective here is could use a uh, grinder to grind that off, grind the welds with a cutoff wheel. But the objective here is not to damage this steel here any more than we're going to. I'm going to end up cutting that whole bracket off. No saving this. Alright, what we did was, because I'm a perfectionist, we cut those out. They're too bent up. No way to straighten them. It's way too much heat. A little two by three angle iron. We cut them out right there. We pulled the wire loom through, tied a wire to it so we can just go ahead and pull it back through. And we're gonna get a couple pieces of uh, steel and weld them back in there. 
and I'm going to pick up some 16 or a quarter inch piece of steel and put over the top of that. All right, here's what I did, guys and gals. I took that half round piece of flat stock I had and I cut it out with a torch. I traced it out underneath with a permanent magic marker to get a rough piece that I need. I'm going to use the same welder that we use for the revitalizing car batteries and I'm going to tack it back here. After I grind it all down, of course, I'm going to tack it back here so that I can come in and grind this down and get it right up smooth to the hitch itself. So let's get cracking and stacking. All right, we'll move this over and see if we got it. We'll go about right there. I think we can cut this off right here. We don't need to go that. We don't need to go that far forward. So we'll cut that off, maybe about half inch back, right across there. Now I could clamp it to the trailer and grind it down, but I, this way I can get it really exact. Right there. Now we'll take it over to the chop saw and chop that piece off. Now I could use the torch to do that, so uh, we're going to use this instead. I don't suggest you do it this way, but I could lay it flat, but it takes all day to cut something that thick through there, so we're not going to do that. perfect time to try out the DeWalt blades versus the one that comes with it. So far I'm really impressed with this chop saw, cut off saw, chop saw, whatever you want to call it. Not impressed with the wheel that comes with it though. We'll see. night and day difference. Those DeWalt blades are the bomb. All right, so I have the rod. I can give you the perfect combo for welding this type of steel uh, to whatever the thickness that we're using. It's perfect size rod. And this is the welder that we're using right here. I have numerous different ones. This one works real good. They'll be in the tools list as well. But our main goal today is to get it tacked on so I can grind it down. We got rain looming, and uh, we'll see what we can get done here. This is Florida, it's a dry time of the year right now. So let's see what we can do. We're gonna try it at 149 on the amperage, and uh, we'll go right there. I think we'll try a little bead, just a little one right there, and maybe one there and there. Beautiful. Good little welder. Now we'll do one here and here. Nice. I should have my gloves on, but this is pretty mild welding here, so. Nice. We'll get it under here a little bit. I'll chisel the flag off there and we'll go to town, but now I'm going to grind it all down. Uh, maybe I'll weld across the bottom here, call that good. We'll be done with this.
Nice, that thing is not coming off there. By the time we grind it all up and make it look good, it'll look awesome. And if anybody wants to put their jack back on here, they can, but there'll be no reason for it because it's never going to happen again. The damage that Julio Cesar Chavez Rodriguez, Jorge Chavez, or whatever name he's using these days, will be able to do this again. Well, that's what I got to do, all that grinding. And uh, I'll get it down. Pretty much what you'll see when I get done with it. It will be all flush, and then I'll show you what we do when we weld it again. All right, we got it all done, and I used a grinder stone to get it close, and now I'm going to use a flapper disc to clean the rest of it all up, and then we'll weld this edge here and the one on the other side. And I know I don't have to go through all this, but I'm just a perfectionist about it, and I want it to look good. I think. I don't know what you guys think, but uh, you're definitely getting a schooling on Mox Nick's fabricating. Now we're going to weld this side and this side. And I love it because those welders use, you can use a 220 plug-in or you can use a standard house voltage. And this is the rod that we're using right here. So what I'm going to do when I weld this, I'm going to try to stay below that edge here so I don't mess up my beautiful little edge there. We're going to get dumped down with rain here shortly. Yeah, here comes the rain. Sorry guys, I'll finish it later. All right guys and gals, we got it all on, done. We got a few little pinholes in the weld, but we ground it down nice and beautiful and it is solid. And I know it's way overkill, but you know what? That's the way I am. But it looked out, it looks good. All we got to do is put some zinc oxide primer on it and paint it up and then go for the rails that go across here from there to there. Once we do that, we can put our new jacks on. GoPro stop recording. Well, I came over to show you what we got done on it, and there's a bet you that's not one of them little buggers right there is not up in Michigan. Gotta love Florida, I tell you. Sandals and shorts, pretty much are year round. Anyhow, we got one of the weld on um, jacks on, and we got that all painted up. It turned out really well, I think, and it's not going anywhere. It's definitely overkill, but if you're going to do something like this, you want to do it and make it better. Uh, I'm going to show you how these go on right here, how to put it on on the other side, because I have a method that I'm going to do. I'm going to have two on this trailer one for lifting and one for putting the wheel on so that I can uh, wheel it around the trailer but we got it all welded up nice she's a weirdo aren't you weirdo so anyhow sorry about that just goofing off so there it is it's welded on we did it welded it all the way around they had to drill through the frame. See the pin there? The pull-out pin? One there. And one up there. Because the pin hit the frame and I wanted it all the way through there. So when you pull that pin, you swivel it up out of the way. And Bingo was his name. GoPro stop recording.